Montana toothpaste for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair bring you the Alan Young Show. Well, it's Friday night, and once again we meet the star of our show, that young man who is young today and young forever, Alan Young. <laughs> A busy department store here. Uh, pardon me, young man. May I be of some service? Yeah, I want to buy a gift, something for a young lady. Oh, I see. Did you have anything in mind? Oh, yeah, I wanted to buy her something that kind of stretches out and snaps. That, that stretches out and snaps? Yes. Do you sell turtles? <laughs> can help you select a gift. Yeah. Now, uh, young ladies always like cosmetics. How about some face powder? That's a good idea, yeah. Well, now, of course, you have to match the makeup to her face. Uh, are her features anything like mine? Well, no. Most of hers are in the front of her head. <laughs> well, on my way to work, I have to ride the sunset butt. That'll do it. Oh. <laughs> young man, mm-hmm. will you kindly make up your mind? What do you want to get for your girlfriend? Girlfriend? Oh, no, this, this young lady is my mother. I want to buy a... Gift for Mother's Day. Oh, well, why didn't you say so in the first place? (laughs) We have a wonderful gift for your mother. A lovely silk dress. Very reasonable. A silk dress, Yes. That's it right over there on that dummy. Real silk? Certainly. Why don't you go over to the dummy and feel the material for yourself? All right. (laughs) Hmm, it's smooth and... (laughs) (laughs) I I beg your pardon, madam. (laughs) Made a mistake. This must be the dummy over here. Thank you. I'll just, uh, just run my fingers across the shoulders. Wrong again, but it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I don't think I'll take it, Bess. I don't know her size. Well, is her shape anything like mine? Well, no, most of hers isn't... Oh, we went through that before, yes. <laughs> I have a novel idea for a gift for Mother's Day, a box of candy. Well, we have quite a few brands. Now, here's a beautiful box of Blum's candy. Oh, well, I think I'd like some with the soft centers. Are you sure now? That's what I want, soft centers. Well, you finally used your head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Here's your candy. Thanks. I better get right home. I want to wrap it up and mail it now. all wrapped up. I'll write something nice on the card. Should be something nice and poetic. Let's see now. Dear Mom, when I was a little baby, life was certainly strange. Though father was a streetcar conductor, it was you who made the change. (laughs) That's not very poetic. I better ask Jonathan. He knows about these things. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, dare you to spell me now, Alan. I'm in the midst of wrapping me gift to me mother. What are you sending her, Jonathan? Well, the same gift I send her every year, me lad. A picture of her famous son, Jonathan Mildew. (laughs) Just look at this portrait, my boy. Did you ever see such a profile? Look at the arch of me noble brow, the delicate tilt of me nose, the bold curve of me determined chin. Have you ever seen anything with quite that shape before? (laughs) Not since I got that road map of the Lincoln Highway. (laughs) Jonathan, all I wanted was a little help on a Mother's Day poem. Well, me lad, I'm glad to see that you remembered your dear old mother. I shall never forget mine. She was a famous star in the theater. Yeah, I know. In fact, my father once saw her on the stage. Oh, did he really? He said it was remarkable the way she hid behind that bubble. What if she was a bubble dancer? She was the greatest one that ever trod the boards. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget her billing on the marquee. Bulging Bertha and her barbaric bump. (laughs) But she left the stage with a broken heart, me lad. A broken heart? Yes, me boy. One day her bubble developed a slow leak... And she thought the audience was hissing at her. You know, you and I certainly led different kinds of lives, Jonathan. I was brought up on a farm. Mm, farm life is a rugged existence, me lad. Yeah, my mother's hair turned white before she was 30. Mm, she must have worried a good deal. Well, no, one day she was out milking the cow and the wind shifted. <laughs> My 
mother's still back there on the farm. That's why I'm sending this box of candies, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, by the way, Alan, have you seen the article on Mother's Day in the Van Nuys Gazette? Mm -hmm. They've chosen Hubert Updike's mother again as the typical American mother. Filthy rich Updike's mother, huh? Let's see that article, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh... Uh, selected for the tenth consecutive year as Van Nuys' typical American mother is the wealthy Mrs. Hubert Updike. Celebrations for Mother's Day will be held on the Updike lawn. It'll be a clear, sunny day as Mrs. Updike has ordered all the clouds to leave for Florida. <laughs> now, I ask you, my lad, is she a typical American mother? Of course she isn't. Just because the Updike family is so influential, she always gets picked. There are plenty of other mothers who deserve the honor. Me lad, you know Mr. Bosby, the editor of the Gazette. Why not see him about this? I will, Jonathan. I'll see to it that fairness and justice will triumph. It shall be my duty as champion of the people to defend... <laughs> Gee, I feel like Mr. D.A. <laughs> So busy today. Well, oh, there's Mr. Busby's office. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, pardon, Mr. Busby. Speak up, young man, speak up. I haven't got all day busy, Busby, to call me. Got a million things to do. Got a million things to do. <laughs> I guess you're the busiest man in town. That's me, young, the busiest man in town. Haven't even got time to go out for lunch. I eat a hamburger right here in the office. Yeah. Well, Mr. Busby, you're pouring ink on your hamburger. Ink? Ink? Is that what I'm doing? Pouring ink on my hamburger? Yeah. How do you like that? And I thought Heinz was putting out blue ketchup. <laughs> Mr. Bar I came here to see you because of Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Uh, great thing, mothers. Mm -hmm. Ought to be one in every family. Be nice. <laughs> I take my mother. What a sweet little woman. What a sweet little woman. Nicest little mother you ever want to meet. Yeah. Oh, pardon me now. Hello. Uh, hello. Oh, 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 hello, Mom. Just talking about you. Just telling somebody what a sweet old woman you are. What's that, Mom? No kidding. What a wonderful present for Mother's Day. So long, Mom. Gee, what did your mother get for Mother's Day? Six months off for good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I came here to see you about Mother's Day. You have a wife, don't you? Sometimes I wonder. Huh? I married the ugliest woman in town there. Uh, uh, ugliest woman in town. <laughs> You should see her legs. What terrible legs. Why, they don't go straight up and they don't go straight down. Looks like she's standing on two pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Buzz, you certainly talk straight from the shoulder. That's where her legs come from, straight from the shoulder. <laughs> you ought to see her legs, young Why, she's really knocked in. Look, never mind your wife's legs. Well, they really come together, them legs. She can walk down the street and trim the hedges at the same time. <laughs> Mind the handy cracking walnuts, though. No, right. <laughs> Just listen to me for a minute. I don't think it's right for Mrs. Updike to be selected as the typical mother every year. Every mother ought to have a fair chance for the award. Maybe you're right, young. Lots of women here in Van Nuys are fine mothers. Even my wife is a good mother. Huh? She just bought a bicycle for my son Gertrude. Then she brought Gertrude. No, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Gertrude? Your son's name is Gertrude? Gertrude? Of course not. Gertrude, silliest name for a boy I ever heard. Sure. What is your son's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> but why don't we make sure that every woman in Van Nuys is given an equal chance to be selected as a typical mother? You're, you're right. Uh, absolutely right. We'll give every woman a chance. Now, I'll check the women in one half of the town, and you check the women in the other half of the town. Okay, Mr. Bobby, it's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> every woman in Van Nuys will have a chance to be the typical American mother. We'll see how the boys make out in a moment. Right now, here's a word for men. Short men, tall men, fat men, thin men. Dark men, light men, men with curly hair, men with straight hair. And the word is... Vitalis. Vitalis. For all men who want to keep their hair looking natural, masculine, well-groomed. You see, no woman likes to see a man's hair looking plastered and greasy. And that's why more men are turning to Vitalis in the 60-second workout. Because Vitalis keeps dry, unruly hair under control without a trace of greasiness. You see, there's no mineral oil in Vitalis. Only pure vegetable oils that give your hair a natural luster, the way nature intended. But that's not all Vitalis can do for you. The Vitalis 60-second workout makes your scalp feel like a million, too. 
where it loosens your tight, dry scalp, routes loose dandruff, helps prevent excessive falling hair. Your scalp feels wonderful, and your hair looks well-groomed in a natural, masculine way. So, men, take a tip. If you want to look your best tomorrow, get a bottle of Vitalis tonight. Well, Alan Young and Mr. Busby are canvassing Van Nuys to find the typical mother. Let's join Alan and see how he's making out. Madam, on behalf of the Van Nuys Gazette, I want to thank you for this interview. You certainly typify motherhood... Of course, you do look a little overweight, but you have the kind of big brown eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> I guess I've rehearsed the speech enough. I'll try it out in some of the neighbors. See now, this is Mrs. Johnson's house. She's got lots of kitties. She's such a wonderful mother. Hello, Alan. Oh, it's Mr. Johnson. Uh, uh, don't slam the door, Alan. I got a cake in the oven. Oh, I see. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, is Mrs. Johnson home? No, she's out for the day, and I'm taking care of the house. That's why I'm wearing this apron. Well, you almost look like your wife in that apron. Yeah, I know. When I opened the door this morning, the milkman pinched me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and as for that, a fuller brush man pinched me. Mm-hmm. And then something terrible happened. The ice man pinched me. <laughs> that was worse than the others? He used his ice tongs. <laughs> well, I'm sorry Mrs. Johnson isn't home. I'm trying to find the typical mother. After all, you have so many children. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're just full of mischief. Mm-hmm. Just full of mischief. Why, early this morning, they put a firecracker inside my pajamas. Gee, what happened? Well, exactly at 6.30... The alarm clock and my pants went off together. <laughs> All kitties are like that, Mr. J. Yeah. I used to play tricks when I was a little kid. I once tied my grandfather's beard to the doorknob. You tied his beard to the doorknob? Mm, Grandpa couldn't figure out what happened. Every time somebody came into the room, he went out. Uh, where kitties get such silly ideas, I'll never dick. Oh, just look at them. Mm. Albert, stop hitting Herbert over the head with that hammer. It won't do any good. He was born with that point on top. <laughs> Sorry, I troubled you, Mr. Johnson. Where can I find Mrs. Johnson? Oh, uh, she's over to the zoo. She's over to the zoo? Huh? Yeah. She's feeding buckshot to the stork so he can't take off. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. He's feeding him buckshot so he won't bring any more beaties. <laughs> <laughs> I must go let them miss a job. You must do that. Yeah. Goodbye, Mrs. Jay. Well, I hope I have better luck finding a typical mother at the next house. Let's see now. Here we are. Oh, uh, pardon me, Adam. Are you married? Oh, yes. I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world. I'm just crazy about him. I just adore him. Well, that's just fine. Oh, he's just precious. Our life together has been absolutely beautiful. A perfect picture of wedded bliss. Oh, and when were you married? Twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Any children? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's no gums. I'm your big baby. Oh, now, Randolph, you are not a baby. I am so. Come on, Snuggums. Kitchy, kitchy, cool me again. <laughs> Randolph, please, at your age, after all, you're a married man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tie my tie. Tie your own tie, precious. Now, Snooky, if you don't tie my tie, I'm going to give you the air. Well, if you don't tie your own tie, I'll give you the air. I'm the one who needs the air. <laughs> so far, I haven't had much luck, but maybe I ought to tie the other side of the street here. Uh, the 
Some filthy rich up there in that big long car of his. Look at him drive as though he owned the street. Oh, Alan, will you please drop a few marshmallows in front of my car? I'd like to try and stop on something soft. <laughs> yeah, uh, you uh, you look a little upset today, Hubert. Yes, yes, Alan. Oh, I'm simply glorious. Oh, you're glorious. Oh, what, what's wrong? Well, on my way here, I put out my hand for a left turn, and the traffic cop refused to kiss it. <laughs> You're upset. Uh, where are you bound for, Hubert? Well, well I, I'm going downtown. You see, Sunday is Mother's Day, and I'm doing some shooping. <laughs> some shooping? <laughs> I suppose you'll buy a very expensive cruising. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I tried to send Mother a gift yesterday, yes. the most beautiful present you ever saw. It was absolutely breathtaking, mm. but the post office wouldn't accept the package. What was wrong? My feet stuck out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Hubert, I have news for you. Your mother isn't going to be nominated on Mother's Day this year. What is this? <laughs> Every week he's amazed. You heard me, Hubert. Some other woman is going to be nominated as the typical mother. Oh, mother, call up the butcher shop. You're a dead duck. Do you know? <laughs> Hubert, I, I didn't think this news would upset you so much. Well, it does, Alan. I, I love my mother. You do? Well, I worship the ground her safe deposit box drags on. <laughs> Well, Hubert, this year, we want every woman to have an equal chance. I bet your mother didn't even take care of you when you were a baby. You must have been raised by a nurse. How can you say that, Alan? My mother always used to put me to sleep herself. She used to tell me nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes? Yes, my, my favorite one was, Tom and Jill went up the hill to... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tom and Jill, what happened to Jack? Oh, we up dogs have all the Jacks. Oh. <laughs> Look, Hubert, you can tell your mother she's going to have some serious competition. My mother will win like she does every year. Aura wow wow. Aura wow. <laughs> Gee, he's so mad. We'll see if his mother wins again. Let's see, which house was I up to? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, there's a little boy sitting on the steps crying. <laughs> oh, what? what? <laughs> Gee. He's so healthy, too. <laughs> what, what's the matter, Sonny? I saw a well, it's terrible. Mother's Day is coming, and then Father's Day is coming. Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Well, haven't you got enough money to buy them a present? <laughs> it's worse than that. This is California. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but what, what's this? California, what's that got to do with Mother's Day and Father's Day? Well, they both wear slacks, and I can't tell which is which. Oh. <laughs> well... Maybe I can find a typical mother in the next house. <laughs> oh, pardon me, madam. My name is Alan Young. I'm doing some work for the Van Nuys Gazette. Oh, monsieur, comment allez-vous? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Won't you come in, monsieur? Uh, monsieur, yeah, thank you. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Mais oui. Uh, will you give me the correct answer? Mais oui. You sure I'm not troubling you? Oh, may we? You mixed up. It's May 9th. <laughs> Look, I'd like some information on Mother's Day. Of course, monsieur. Yvette is all ears. <laughs> the silliest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> well, well, what is all this about Mother's Day, monsieur? That's the silliest thing I've said all day, too. <laughs> well, you see, we're holding a campaign to find a typical mother. Well, I'm sorry, monsieur. Yvette is not married, but I am very anxious to tie the knot. Well, a French Girl Scout, huh? <laughs> <laughs> monsieur does not understand. Yvette, she is looking for a better hat. Well, you'll never find a better one than the one you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Yvette, ooh, I've got some work to do. You see, the Van Nuys Gazette is waiting for my report. Oh, uh, my mother, she is in France, and... Here, look, monsieur, what I am sending her for Mother's Day. Oh, that's a nice dress. I'm yes. sure your mother will be crazy about it. Oh, I made it myself, monsieur, but I am not sure it will fit her. Well, what size is she? Well, Yvette is not sure of her size, no. but she is about, no. about... Monsieur, she has a shape just like you. Oh? Huh? Perhaps monsieur would try it on. No? No. <laughs> oh, come on, monsieur, please. I will just slip it over your head. Ah, ah, there. Gee, I feel kind of silly. I copied this dress from Saks Fifth Avenue. I know, it's a little tighter on Wiltshire Boulevard. <laughs> Here, 
monsieur. Put on this hat and veil. That is the rest of the outfit. But Yvette, I... I will be back in just a minute, monsieur. I must get some needle and thread. Yeah, but I gotta... <laughs> feel kind of ridiculous, all dressed up in these women's clothes. Uh-oh. Yvette, there's somebody at the... Uh, if anybody sees me... Uh, good day. I want to... Uh... Oh, now don't move, madam. Let me look at you just as you are. <laughs> but, Mr. Busby... I searched the whole neighborhood, and at last I found her, that typical American mother. What's your name? <laughs> please. Oh, Mrs. Please. Beautiful name, please. Beautiful name. Now, how many children do you have? Children? How many times have you been to the hospital? Three times. Three but... children. Nice family. No, no, no. It was appendix, tonsils, and adenoids. Lovely name for children. Appendix, tonsils, and adenoids. <laughs> now, here, Joe, take a picture of this woman. Get a nice shot, Joe. It'll be on page one tomorrow. But Mr. Busby. Oh, we have company. Keep on taking the pictures, Joe. You like the dress I have made for my mother? It's a beautiful dress, and it looks so good on your beautiful mother. Mother? Yeah, she's going to get you. Uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Busby. Uh, Monsieur Busby. Uh, I find the mother, the mother of this event. I am a French woman, and so I cannot be the typical American mother. Oh, French, English, whatever. Everybody's an American. We're living in a democracy, son. Yvette, I expect you and your very charming mother at the Updike Estate tonight when we choose a typical mother. Now, come on, Joe. Monsieur, he thought you were Yvette's mother. He thought you were a French woman. But what am I go- What am I going to do? <laughs> Monsieur, Yvette got you into this trouble. Yvette will get you out. Oh, as they say in France, si vous devenir nécessaire, j'espère qu'il est possible de faire les choses bien. English translation, bring in the clothesline, mother. I pulled a bloomer tonight. <laughs> Before Alan untangles himself from this one, Let's untangle some facts ourselves about toothpaste. Fact number one. There's a world of difference between a dull, lifeless smile and a gay, sparkling one. And the kind of toothpaste you use makes this difference. Fact number two. Now more than ever, people are turning to Ipana toothpaste for a brighter, more radiant smile. For that Ipana smile of beauty. Fact number three. Dentists prefer Ipana toothpaste two to one over any other dentifrice for their own personal use, according to a nationwide survey. So, friends, why don't you, too, try Ipana with gentle gum massage? Here's what you do. Brush your teeth regularly with Ipana. Then, with a the fingertip, briefly and gently massage your gums at the line where they meet your teeth, the lifeline of your smile. Guard this line carefully, gently, with Ipana and massage. Because firm, healthy gums, sound, bright teeth, and a sparkling smile need this care to stay that way. So get a tube of Ipana toothpaste. Ipana, for your smile of beauty. Yours, yours, Hubert. <laughs> uh, Mother, I'll have some dreadful news for you. I'm afraid you're going to have some competition for the title of typical mother. What is this? <laughs> yours, Mother, I-, I heard that some other woman has a good chance of winning the crown this year. Oh, if she does, Hubert, I'm not going to give you the present I promised you for Christmas. But, Mother, I had my heart set on those Rocky Mountains. Hubert, <laughs> I must be chosen the typical of Mother. Uh, why didn't you bribe them? Well, after all, Mother, there are some things that you can't buy for money. What did you say? <laughs> I said, Mother, there are some things that you can't buy for money. May the Bank of America have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, probably Mother's competitor's door now. I'd better get out and open it. Do we have to go in here? I feel silly dressed up as your mother like oh, this. Monsieur, you say yourself it is unfair if Madame Optike is once again the typical mother. Yeah, but I feel so silly wearing this dress and this veil. Oh, that orchid in your hair. She is pretty. Yes. I just couldn't get away from Tom Brenneman. <laughs> 
don't think I should do this, Yvette. Well, well, well. Uh, welcome to the Updark Mansion, Lottie. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. Oh, this lady here must be your charming mother. Yeah. Uh, are you the French woman whose picture was in the Van Nuys Gazette? Buenos noches, senor. <laughs> uh, my... My mother, he is nervous. He is nervous. But I am pleased to meet you, Monsieur Updike. Well, the pleasure is all mine. Ah. May I uh, kiss your hand, mademoiselle? Oh, but of course. Do la la! <laughs> You have the smoothest hand I've ever kissed. Mademoiselle must use truchet. Yes, and now I shall kiss your hand, madam. Madame must use shellac. (laughs) I shall introduce you to mother. Oh, here comes mother now. (laughs) She's wearing her large charm bracelet. Mother, dear, I want you to meet your confiteur. Uh, how do you do? Oh, très bien, très bien, my friend. Or oh, as we say in France, bon ami. Or oh, perhaps you use Dutch cleanser. <laughs> uh, I trust you are a member of the Blue Book. After all, I am a member of the Horsey Set. The Horsey Set? Yeah. yeah. I saw you once run at Hollywood Park. Yes, yes, yes. And a French egg. Oh, how vulgar. <laughs> You are from France, I'm told. Oh, garçon, garçon, I have lived for many years on the most fashionable street in all of France. Oh, Rue de la Paix? No, Rue du Valet. <laughs> I uh, hate to break up this charming conversation, but Mr. Bosby is in the other room, and he's about to announce the name of the uh, typical mother. Oh, come, let us join him. I have little doubt what the outcome will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting nervous. Oh, you are doing fine, monsieur. But this evening gown, I think it's cut too low in the back. My suspenders are showing. <laughs> Do not worry. Monsieur Busby, he is making the announcement. Oh, Ladies yes. and gentlemen, we've canvassed the town for the typical mother. Your applause will determine the winner. First, the French lady, madam, please. And now, Mrs. Hubert Upjohn. <laughs> oh, heaven to the egg and I. They gave her the bird. <laughs> Now, here is our third contestant. Well, well, it looks like our third contestant is the winner. I wonder who it can be. And it's only fitting that anyone who has raised 14 children will be picked as the typical American mother. Uh, thank you, everybody. Oh, I must tell us to Mrs. Johnson. Well, it's Mr. Johnson. Congratulations. <laughs> Promise not to tell? I promise. Not a word. Well, I've got a new bow, and the grandest guy, a smooth number. Smooth shaven? Right. And always good natured. Sounds like the Ingram type. The type who uses Ingram shaving cream because he knows that rich Ingram lather helps condition his face for the razor. Gives him close, smooth shaves and cool comfort. Men, remember, comfort means coolness. Coolness means Ingram. I-N-G-R-A-M. Ingram, the cooler shaving cream. Keep smooth, yet keep smiling. With cooling Ingram. The Alan Young Show is written by Al Schwartz and Sherwood Schwartz. The part of Hubert Updike is played by Jim Backus. Remember to listen to Duffy's Tavern on Wednesday night over these same stations. And now, here's Alan Young again. Thanks, Jimmy Wellington. During the week, friends, please remember the two fine products that bring you this show, Ipana for the smile of beauty and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Ipana, Vitalis. See you next week. Good night. Thank you. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.